Haggad v. Gozo Daily. Facts, criminal and administrative complaints were filed against respondents, Mayor Alfredo Wano, Vice Mayor Paterno Canet and Sanganyang Pan Lungsad member Rafael Mayal, all public officials of Manda City. By Manda City Councilors Magno B. Dianson and Gaudiosa O. Bersid, by Manda City Councilors Magno B. Dianson and Gaudiosa O. Bersid with the office of the Deputy Ombudsman for the Visayas. The respondents were charged with having violated RA No. 3019, as amended, Articles 170 and 171 RPC, and RA No. 6713. Councillors Dianson and Bersid averred that respondent officials, acting in conspiracy, had caused the alteration and slash or falsification of Ordinance No. 018-92 by increasing the allocated appropriation therein from P3,494,364.57 to P7M without authority from the Sanganyang Panlungsad of Manda City. Aside from opposing the motion for preventive suspension, Respondent officials prayed for the dismissal of the complaint on the ground that the ombudsman supposedly was bereft of jurisdiction to try, hear and decide the administrative case filed against them since, under Section 63 LGC, the power to investigate and impose administrative sanctions against said local officials, as well as to effect their preventive suspension, had now been vested with the office of the President. Dianson and Bersid argued that the LGC could not have repealed abrogated or otherwise modified the pertinent provisions of the Constitution granting to the Ombudsman the power to investigate cases against all public officials and that, in any case, the power of the Ombudsman to investigate local officials under the Ombudsman Act had remained unaffected by the provisions of the Local Government Code of 1991. The Office of the Deputy Ombudsman denied the motion to dismiss and recommended the preventive suspension of respondent officials except City Budget Officer Pedro M. Guido, until the administrative case would have been finally resolved by the Ombudsman. A petition for prohibition, with prayer for a writ of preliminary injunction and temporary restraining order, was filed by respondent officials with the RDC. Acting favorably on the pleas of petitioning officials, respondent judge issued a restraining order directed at petitioner. Enjoining him from enforcing and slash or implementing the questioned order of preventive suspension issued in OMB Vis ADM 92-015. Issue, 1 The Ombudsman has jurisdiction over the case held yes ratio, the general investigatory power of the Ombudsman is decreed by Section 13 Article X1, of the 1987 Constitution. While his statutory mandate to act on administrative complaints is contained in Section 19 of R.A. No. 6770, Section 21 of the same statute names the officials who could be subject to the disciplinary authority of the Ombudsman. Taken in conjunction with Section 24 of R.A. No. 6770, Petitioner thus contends that the Office of the Ombudsman correspondingly has the authority to decree preventive suspension on any public officer or employee under investigation by it. Respondent officials, upon the other hand, argue that the disciplinary authority of the Ombudsman over local officials must be deemed to have been removed by the subsequent enactment of the Local Government Code of 1991 which vests the authority to investigate administrative charges listed under Section 60 thereof, on various offices in the case specifically of complaints against elective officials of provinces and highly urbanized cities. Thus, respondents insist, conformably with Section 63 of the Local Government Code, preventive suspension can only be imposed by the President if the respondent is an elective official of a province, a highly urbanized or an independent component city. There is nothing in the LGC to indicate that it has repealed, whether expressly or impliedly, the pertinent provisions of the Ombudsman Act. The two statutes on the specific matter in question are not so inconsistent, let alone irreconcilable, as to compel us to only uphold one and strike down the other. Well settled is the rule that repeals of laws by implication are not favored, and that courts must generally assume their congruent application. 
the two laws must be absolutely incompatible, and a clear finding thereof must surface, before the inference of implied repeal may be drawn. The rule is expressed in the maxim, Interpreter et concordare licibus esf optimus interpretendi, i.e., every statute must be so interpreted and brought into accord with other laws as to form a uniform system of jurisprudence. The fundament is that the legislature should be presumed to have known the existing laws on the subject and not to have enacted conflicting statutes. Hence, all doubts must be resolved against any implied repeal and all efforts should be exerted in order to harmonize and give effect to all laws on the subject. Certainly, Congress would not have intended to do injustice to the very reason that underlies the creation of the Ombudsman in the 1987 Constitution which is to insulate said office from the long tentacles of officialdom. Quite interestingly, Sections 61 and 63 of the present Local Government Code run almost parallel with the provisions then existing under the old Code. The authority to conduct administrative investigation and to impose preventive suspension over elective provincial or city officials was at that time entrusted to the Minister of Local Government until it became concurrent with the Ombudsman. Upon the enactment of RA No. 6770, specifically under Sections 21 and 24 thereof, to the extent of the Common Grant the Local Government Code of 1991. In fine, did not effect a change from what already prevailed, the modification being only in the substitution of the Secretary of Local Government by the Office of the President. Respondent local officials contend that the six-month preventive suspension without pay under Section 24 of the Ombudsman Act is much too repugnant to the 60-day preventive suspension provided by Section 63 of the Local Government Code to even now maintain its application. The two provisions govern differently. In order to justify the preventive suspension of a public official under Section 24 of RA No. 6770, the evidence of guilt should be strong, and the charge against the officer or employee should involve dishonestly, oppression or grave misconduct or neglect in the performance of duty, that charges should warrant removal from a service or the respondent's continued stay in office would prejudice the case filed against him. The Ombudsman can impose the six-month preventive suspension to all public officials, whether elective or appointive, who are under investigation. Upon the other hand, in imposing the shorter period of 60 days of preventive suspension prescribed in the Local Government Code of 1991 on an elective local official, it would be enough that there is reasonable ground to believe that the respondent has committed the act or acts complained of, the evidence of culpability is strong. The gravity of the offence so warrants, or the continuance in office of the respondent could influence the witnesses or pose a threat to the safety and integrity of the records and other evidence. The contention is without merit. The records reveal that petitioner issued the order of preventive suspension after the filing by respondent officials of their opposition on the motion for preventive suspension and by Mayor Wano of his memorandum in compliance with the directive of petitioner be that, as it may, we have heretofore held that. Not being in the nature of a penalty, a preventive suspension can be decreed on an official under investigation after charges are brought and even before the charges are heard. Naturally, such a preventive suspension would occur prior to any finding of guilt or innocence. Moreover, respondent officials were, in point of fact, put on preventive suspension only after petitioner had found, in consonance with our ruling in Buenos Aires vs Flavier, that the evidence of guilt was strong. Finally, it does appear, as so pointed out by the Solicitor General that respondent officials petition for prohibition, being an application for remedy against the findings of petitioner contained in his September 21, 1992 order, should not have been entertained by the trial court. <laughs>